This is the first time this caregiver has ever bathed her master. She sprayed her face, she almost choked her master to death. And then she gets all over him when she feeds him. But the strange thing is, not only did the master not fire him, he paid him several times more than anyone else. Philippe was a rich man. He was paralyzed for life because of a parachute jump, so he needed a caretaker. Then a man came in. He wasn't looking for a job. He just wanted Philippe to sign a letter of dismissal, so he could collect unemployment benefits. But Philippe kept him. But Driss refused, and took a book with him. Driss went to his wife, and brought her a birthday present. The book he took from Philippe's room, but his son's birthday was a month ago. Driss was idle all day. They were forced to live in a dilapidated rented house. His wife kicked Driss out of the house. Now he needed a job. Driss finally agreed to work for Philippe. Driss's first job as a caregiver was full of problems. He almost fell over, feeding him all over the place. He even refused to give Philippe a bowel movement. But it didn't matter, because Philippe didn't expect Driss to do a good job. One day, Driss takes Philippe out for a walk. They went to a gallery. Apparently, Driss didn't appreciate it. When he heard that a box like this was going for $80,000, Philippe said that some things can't be priced, like the collection of novels in his room. His wife gives him a copy every year. Their significance can't be measured in money. Driss was deep in thought. It was the one he'd taken. Late that night, Philippe was suddenly ill. The image of his wife came back to him, the pain that he couldn't express. Philippe wanted to give up the treatment. Driss screamed, I can't lose this job now. You want me to help you mouth to mouth? Philippe suddenly smiled. The two of them were walking down the street. The streets are empty at 4 a.m. For the first time, Philippe opened up to Driss. It turns out that in order to take on an extreme sport, he took his wife paragliding in a storm, but the accident took his wife away. Philippe spent the rest of his life in a wheelchair. He's always felt guilty. That night, Philippe carefully asked Nicole if he could ever love a paralyzed man. Nicole said that the right person is only impressed by the head and the heart. It was Philippe's birthday. Driss took him out to pick up his son. He took him and Philippe out for ice cream. Seeing him eat it all over his face, he wanted to clean him up. But his son avoided it subconsciously. But he was willing to try. They had a nice afternoon together. When they returned, Driss asked his son for the book. The boy realizes that his father has stolen the book. He takes it out of his bag and gives it to Philippe. On the way back, Driss confesses everything. Philippe didn't blame him. After all everyone can make mistakes, but on the way home, a group of people showed up at his house. They wanted to celebrate his birthday. Philippe didn't want a birthday. He lost his temper with Nicole. Driss, who was watching, couldn't stand it. He smashed his pager in anger and pushes away the gifts on the table. Driss sees Philippe staring at the wine on the table. He smashed it on the floor, <laughs> listening to the sound of something breaking. Philippe felt more relaxed than ever. Just then, Nicole walked in. Philippe looks innocent. He apologizes to Nicole for his behavior. At that moment, a woman appears at the door. She's Philippe's pen pal. As the conversation continues, Philippe gets ketchup on his shirt. The look of disgust on his pen pal's face. Philippe tries to leave the restaurant, but he bumped into a oh, oh! spilling hot water all over his body. When Philippe returned, he blamed Driss for not persuading him to meet her. Two people arguing finally parted ways unhappily. Driss left Philippe. She started working hard. That day, the teacher approached Driss. He wanted him to visit Philippe. When Driss saw Philippe, he has transformed into a bearded appearance. Driss took Philippe to the paragliding place. He wanted to show him how it feels to fly again. Overlooking the mountains, Philippe felt like he was alive again. He shouted his unhappiness to the sky. At the end of the story, Philippe was alone, looking out the window. Then someone tapped her on the shoulder. They smiled at each other. Everything was in plain words. The person she loved most was right next to her. 